Welcome to Vibin' with Ashley Live. I'm your host, Ashley Live. Tonight, episode 55, 55 episodes, pretty incredible to know that there's been that many episodes. And we have Reggie Parker. He is a bassist out of New York City. I'm really excited to chat with him, bring him in the room and introduce him to all the wonderful people that are in this room. He's gonna be playing for us as well. How are you guys doing tonight? I see Ellie, I see Colette, M. Sims. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate your support. Reggie is in the house. We are going to bring him in the room. Reggie. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Excited. I'm excited to have you. Thank you so much for, for joining me this evening. Yeah, I thank you for having me. Of course, of course. I'm so excited to get to know you a little bit better. You're going to play for us a little, so I'm really excited for all that's to come. Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> wait to hear these questions. <laughs> so, Reggie, I start each show off with a song lyric. So because you were in the room right at 8 p.m., I'm going to share it with you. Okay. So this is from Earth, Wind & Fire's Let's Groove. And the reason I picked this song is because you're a groovy time, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You are funky. You are groovy. And um, I just wanted to share this with everybody that's in the room right now. Let's groove tonight. Share the spice of life. Baby, slice it right. We're going to groove tonight. And I thought this was such a fitting lyric because you're my guest. We're going to groove and we're going to have a fun time. Ah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Reggie, what a great way to start the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love it. I love it. So you're going to start off with some, some tunes for us. So take it away, Reggie. Uh, I'm going to play a little of this song that I wrote on my first project, Snapshots. It's called You Said. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to play a little of the melody. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, yes! Reggie, that was awesome! <laughs> thank you, thank you. The chat was blowing up. Oh, blowing really? Up. Was watching blowing me up. mess up? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And do you want to tell people what those songs were so they know? The first song was uh, a quick version of my song. You said it has lyrics to it. Your okay. lady named Elizabeth Puget singing it from my uh, Snapshots project. That's my first CD I ever done. And yeah. the second song was an abbreviated version of my song called um, Black Hope, Black Soul, Black Pride. And that's on my Black and Beautiful project. And mm -hmm. you know, Came out at an appropriate time last year when we was going through all the George Floyd protests. People were telling me how appropriate the song was for the, for the you know the sad occasion, but it fit fit the moment. So, yeah, you could get all that stuff. Like I pinned my thing. You get it on my website, ResiParker.com. You just go to iTunes. I have three CDs out: Snapshots, uh, The Renaissance Man, Black and Beautiful. I have a bunch of singles out. Will I ever hear you say? Uh, Fearless, and I just dropped my uh, other song, uh, Black Man. Yeah. And my CD will be out later this year. Yeah, lots of incredible music for Reggie. So if you guys are not familiar with Reggie, after this chat, please go on iTunes, go to his website, Spotify, all that good stuff. Yeah, I heard you playing Diva earlier. That's my song. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I mean, I can't pick one of your songs. I mean, I love all your songs for different reasons. Thank you. <laughs> so it's March, which means it's Women's History Month. Reggie, tell us about a woman in your life that inspires you. Ooh, I got two. My mother, of course. Yeah. She, she's still alive, thank God. I lost my father in 2007, but my mom is still here. She mm -hmm. constantly uh, pushes me to do the best because she sees a lot in me. And she's always like my biggest fan, especially with music and yeah. life in general. She tells me about my uh, potential. Uh -huh. And the other person that basically does the same thing is my wife. Mm -hmm. She's always pushing me and telling me things. You know, she told me something the other day. She said, you know, 
you had a great run as a musician. You're not just a genius with music. You mm -hmm. have a genius mind for many other things that you can be using to affect the world, not just musically. Right. And that's deep. So I think every man needs a, a woman. You know, every man wants a beautiful woman, their body to be this, you know how that go. But you need, a man needs a woman in his life that can push him and see the things in him that he doesn't see. Yeah. You know, that he can live, truly live his best life that way. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so important to find that yin to the yang because it's like you're one way, but you need that person that you're with to bring out all those beautiful qualities of yourself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to your childhood. At 12 years old, you convinced your parents to buy you a bass. <laughs> what made you pick the bass and who inspired you to get into music? What was the first part? What? What made you pick the bass? Uh -oh. Well, I, I saw uh, some people play bass, but this guy named Jeffrey White really inspired me. I saw him playing, and I just knew oh, he was so fascinating to watch play. He was so confident, mm -hmm. so funky. You just couldn't take your eyes off of him. And that, from that moment on, I knew I, I had to play bass. I told my parents, and they bought me a little. Well, the first bass I got was a was a big bass because I was young. I was you know twelve, so the bass was huge. But I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. But, I had I had passion for it, mm -hmm. so um, my parents believed in me. They bought it, and then as time went on, I, I got better, and they bought another bass. You know, mm -hmm. I was progressing. I kept progressing, and I put a lot. Of, I put a lot of time into this, Ashley. I <laughs> know. know. We no. live in a microwave world now. Everybody want to press a button to be great. It don't work. Yeah, like that. No, it is. No, blood, sweat, tears, years, years, years of dedication and hard work. It's not like, yeah, you press the button and then poof, here we are. Not going to happen because you're not going to, what if, if, if you do press the button and you, you wake up great, you miss the whole opportunity to actually learn the experience of the, you know, the sweat and tears, the frustration. Yeah, that's the best part of it when you can finally say you made it because you think about the past or all the hurt, you know? Yeah. I love that quote. It's the journey, not the destination. Like enjoy the craziness, the ups and downs, like the hours and hours of passion and hard work. Like you have to just love it and you will eventually get to where you need to be. It's just, you need to put that work in. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, no one wants to do to put the work. They just want, can't just sit on Instagram and think you putting in the work. It, it, you got to do that the work out, off of Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I totally get that. What's your creative process like? That's a great question. No one's asked me that before. My creative process, I have a gift. It took me many years to realize I had a gift for creating music. Mm -hmm. Melodies. I can create a bass line right now if I just started playing. Yeah. And then make it into a song. Because I have the gift of creating bass lines, but I can create melodies too. You know, and I wrote my song, uh, Will I Ever Hear You Say, was... It all started from that melody. So it... it, it that's how I start. So when I play melodies, I can pick the bass up and just start playing something like that, and that will inspire me. I'll take my phone out. I'll record the melody. Because mm -hmm. if you watch TV with all the commercials, you're gonna all the music on, you're going to forget the melody. <laughs> so I take my phone out. I record it right away. And yeah. that's time to add to it. But it's it's fairly easy. It comes easy to me. Mm -hmm. Because I could, I could say I want to write a song, and I'll I write it. I, I'm very... Uh, I'm blessed to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people that struggle with creativity. Yeah. And they often ask me about that. And it took me a while to realize that I was gifted. And I'm also good at naming songs. You know, when, mm -hmm. I, when I get a song, I I, I kind of want it to be a positive or tell a story. That song is, will I ever hear you say that you love me like I love you? Will I ever hear you say those words? You know, yeah. it's about being in a relationship where you say, I love you all the time, but the, mm -hmm. the partner does not say it back. So yeah. a, lot, a lot of people are in that 
situation. So yeah. I try to give my songs some positivity, but keep it, you know, in reality too, where people mm -hmm. can relate to it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's so important to relate to music, like, because you can hear yourself and you're like, oh, I, I know what he's talking about. I'm going through that myself. Right. That, that makes the song so much more powerful to you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And as a person who listens to a lot of music myself, I hear the passion that musicians have. And it shines through when you play with passion and you play with purpose. Like, it's so important. I concur a thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can tell the people just playing for likes, for attention, as opposed yeah. to this. When they once they close their eyes, they're just going to another world. It's it don't care if one person is watching or if a million people is watching. You're gonna get yeah. the same performance either way. Exactly. Yeah, but staying true to yourself, like, is extremely important. Oh man, uh, now now you preaching. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh. So. Other than being like positive and forthcoming and honest, how would you describe the music you create? From my heart. Yeah. From my heart. It's always from my heart. Yeah. It's all musical. It's always going to be a catchy melody. Mm -hmm. not, it's not going to be, never going to be anything that the average person can't catch on to. It's not going to be too intricate, too technical. I don't believe in that because the greatest music is simple. Simplicity is beautiful. It really and is. People have gotten away from that. Everybody's trying to be so macho and create stuff that make them say like, ah, I'm the best. <laughs> yeah. If you're smart, you keep it simple. Because those are the things, if you study music from the past, it's simple. It really yeah. is. You know, all those old songs, the Earth, Wind & Fire stuff is simple, but it's genius at the same time. So it's yeah. a catch too. It's simple, but it's Wow. It makes you say, well, how did they think of that? That's so simple, but it's so powerful. And that's yeah. what music should be. So. Simple. I love that. Because when I think of music from that time, that's what I think of. And then you think of something that maybe came out in the past year or two, and you're like, what? What are you doing? Well, a lot of the music you hear today that gets pushed on the radio is trash. Yeah. It's not the best stuff. The best stuff is at the bottom of the ocean. The, the great, great music... Uh, sinks to the bottom of the ocean and the junk manages to stay afloat at the top for everybody mm -hmm. to see it you know you get you got that big engine label paying money to get the stuff played on the radio you know people yeah. like i can't afford that independent artists can't afford that you got to have a big you got to have six figures just put aside just for that a radio promotion you know anybody exactly. that six figures put aside for radio promotion not at all not just like sitting in the house no yeah, I mean, that's why you don't hear independent artists. We don't get no play. Nobody, people don't even respect us because they look yeah. at it, oh, that's so cute. Cute? You try to write music. And it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Try to write some music. It's not cute. We we putting out some stuff that's major league stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're producing. I produce my own stuff. I don't have somebody that I'm reporting to. I yeah. produce, but I, I put out what I hear. And a mm -hmm. lot of other independent artists do the same thing. Yeah. Nobody People don't care. They just want to sit and stare at Instagram at, at the people that are so-called, you know, got all the publicity. They think Cardi B is doing some genius stuff. Are you kidding me? Please. No. Stop. Let's stop. Yeah. This stuff yeah. is trash. Yeah. No, it, I, I feel like the art of music is, has kind of faded out, and it, it, it does make me sad. But you know what, Ashley? I agree. But the art of music has faded, but so has people's uh, expectations. That People yeah. don't expect. They don't they're shallow in their thinking of music. Mm -hmm. you, yep. Anything you tell anybody, yo, this is the latest song. They just say, okay, cool. That's not, this is dope. No, it's garbage. You could people yep. will will believe anything. Once the masses say this is a good movie, everybody says it's a good movie. People don't think mm -hmm. for themselves no more. You know yeah. that, that's the problem. If everybody starts to say, you know what, this music is garbage. Y'all got to do a better job of putting out better music. If people started posting that and saying it, guarantee you it would make a difference. But no, but people don't care. They think this. They think rap music today is the greatest ever. Mm. Yeah, no. that's a podcast all by itself. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> that's a whole different episode. <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. This stuff is just this. And these guys are wearing three million dollar watches. They're making money with this stuff. Yeah, which is when nuts. you wear a million dollar watch, Ashley. How much mm. money? have in your account 
Hopefully yeah, four, <laughs> at least four million, right? Unbelievable. It's just, and if they, they, they get it legit, I can't be mad at them. I just, the, the playing field is not even. It's like this. Yeah. You know, we all the way down here, and people, no one hears you down here. They just see this part. And all mm -hmm. this stuff down here, nobody's hearing. It's such great music here. And yeah. nobody to care. And that's the mm -hmm. part that hurts me. You drop a record, people don't even listen to it. They'll mm -hmm. put, put two seconds of a clip on your page, and people say, congratulations, fire, killing. But they won't download it. That's where it ends. And yeah. that's where you got to really, I have to catch myself so I don't say things that I, I don't want to say to the people because I really want to say, you know, some things like, come on, bro. That's very yeah. disrespectful that you're not going to take the time out to listen to my art. But people are people. You, I can't change them. That's who they are. Mm -hmm. They're lost. They're just as shallow as the music. It was sad. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you tell people that listen to your music? Like stream it, buy it, support it, share it. What else would you want to support? Well, if you want to support it, you have to download it. That's the only true support. Streaming, yeah. not support. People people think that they stream in your stuff. They they really think that they have just sent you a million dollars. You know, when they you want to send them a gift basket because they stream your music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. I'm like, bro, just download $10. You can't afford that. And, and, and you have all these people that follow you, but you don't have true people that support you. Right. You know, you guys, you see these celebrities got 150 million uh, followers and you right. look at likes per post they get, they getting 200,000, 300,000 likes and they got 150 million people following. That's, that yeah. really makes Not at all. So, I mean, if they have that many, the people like me that got 12,000, how many real supporters do I really have? Right. 10? <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully yeah. much. Than that. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. You'd be surprised. People just don't care, Ashley. Put out a single and you'll see for yourself. You're a mm -hmm. woman, you're pretty, so people people might pay attention. That's sad. You see yeah. a guy you don't have that. Yeah. And that that's very bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what musicians inspire you? Oh, I'm old school, so I got many, you know, Stevie Wonder, Donnie Hathaway. Marcus Miller, Davis Sanborn, Miles Davis. I like genius people origin that original. Right. Stan Park, Jaco Pastore. I, I I don't I'm not a believer in duplication. Duplicate for a season and learn and then you have to get your own voice. We all right. do every musician has become something has duplicated for a season and then they became who they are. Chick Corea duplicated and he became Chick Corea. You yeah. gotta you have to figure it out. But you can't have a season, a life full of duplication because you'll never achieve anything. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you have somebody you look up to for interviews, you study that person like Oprah, she's the queen of interview, then yeah. you gotta make it into your style. You know, you can't yeah. just be Oprah. Oh, there's only one Oprah. Exactly. Like, no one can touch Oprah. But no one can touch you. No. Once no. You find out what you have, nobody can do you. Exactly. So I came from a great time where music was flourishing in the 80s and 90s. It was just untouchable. Rap music, reggae music, gospel music, jazz. It was it was just R&B. Yeah. It was killing back then. And along came Instagram and messed everybody's minds up. Oh, I know, I know. So who would you most like to collaborate with? If I could? Yeah. Mm. Boy, if I can get Stevie Wonder to sing one of my songs, or just yeah. play a harmonica on one of them. Yes. Uh, Marvin Winans sing one of my songs. Uh, I don't really have a lot of musicians that I'm very happy with the musicians that I, that have played on my records because I mm -hmm. ask them to play for a reason because I respect what they do so. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely would love to work with some singers. Layla Hathaway, of course. Mm -hmm. Some, some. I went mad. Jasmine Sullivan. The real people that could sing. Yeah. Not the ones that are pretty. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of other ones too that I wouldn't mind that are really talented. Yeah. You know, I like true talent, true gifts. I just don't mm -hmm. like the, when people just get put on because they was on a reality TV show. Right. Because you got to understand the music business. 
you're trying to get break through a door that's like 20 foot uh, thick yeah. and it's very difficult to get through. It's, it's, you can't get through yourself. You got to have somebody that can put you through it that mm -hmm. has a connection because they don't take, you know, unsolicited stuff. They, they don't know you. How many followers do, do who he or she have? If you're not somebody on Instagram, they don't think you're somebody in life. Can you believe that nonsense? It's, it's such a warped way of thinking, and you're so true when you say that. It's like, what are people, why are we looking at followers? Like, we need to look at true talent. They don't have time for that, Ashley. They're not going to do that. I know. But not, um, think about the Super Bowl. Think about certain things, uh, the Grammy nights, yep. the Music Award night. All they care about is top, top, top artists. Yeah. In the artists, you'll never get a crowd if you never give us an opportunity. Yeah. We get opportunities. Can you play our music on a commercial? Can you play our music in a movie? Can you introduce it somehow so people become familiar with us? Can you play mm -hmm. it on the radio? Why do I have to play pay y'all to play my music? I can't afford that. Have it right. in the music a night, a day. Introducing Reggie Parker. Guys, tell me. What you think of this song by Reggie Park? Give me a chance. If people say it's trash, never play it again. Right. But if they like it, keep put me on rotation. Let me get some visuals. Yeah. But nobody cares, Ashley. They don't care. That's too bad. You gonna tell me on Diva doesn't have an opportunity to be in something dope with women Diva. feel special? Diva is amazing. Thank amazing. You. I and love it, it. It's inspiring. Yeah. You can't put that in a commercial. That commercial comes on every every woman's going to be jumping up and down. You yeah. know, it's the new "I'm Every Woman." Mm -hmm. But they won't give it a chance. Nobody, once again, nobody cares and they don't respect me. But as soon as somebody says, "Yo, we want to sign Reggie Parker to do this new State Farm commercial," now I'm a star. Yeah, no, I, I've always been a star, but you just ignored me. Right. You know, and now you're gonna kiss my behind because I'm not trying to hear you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember the people that was riding with me back in the day. They're still with me now. You yeah. know, those That's are the people that you remember. Yeah, the people that have followed you and are with you in your your times of good and bad. That truly support. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know a few of them right now. Uh -huh. I, I love the people that have rolled with me, and especially the people that played on my records. And it's one thing to play in the record, but you got to help me push the record too. Yeah. When the record comes out, can you post it on your page instead of your story? Your story's yeah. up for 24 hours. People think they're doing you a favor by putting you in their story. Bro, you got three, 30 people that follow your story. Right, you and the thing, is, the thing is with the story is you think of how many people you follow, and it's like, I don't really want to watch everyone's story. So you're so right. People think they're doing you a favor when they put you in stories, but not so much. You almost got to pay people, Ashley. I know. Ain't that sad? It is, but you are dropping some truth here, and I feel like people need to hear it, and I feel like a lot of people are kind of blind to it, so I appreciate you letting you know, us know what's actually You know why they're blind to it? Because they've never been in that situation to put something out that they worked so hard for. They haven't, right. they haven't jumped off the bridge to take that, that chance and say, hey, I'm going to record a record that's going to take me two years to put out, and then I'm going to put it out, yeah. and I'm going to see how many all the people that ignore it, even the people I thought was cool with me. That hurts, yeah. but that's part of the business. Yeah. People will do that. People, my mother is 78 years old and she told me, Reggie, I've never seen people more about themselves in my entire life. And she's right. Everybody's about themselves. Instagram, all about them. Look at me. I'm walking to the bathroom, walking into my purpose. No, that's I'm walking in, walking in my purpose. I'm like, no, you know, you're walking to the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? What is, what's <laughs> going on here? People make Instagram, they showcase things that are regular and make it look so big. I'm, about, I'm at this barbecue, it's going down. What's going down at a barbecue? Exactly. Nothing. You, it's a barbecue. You're on vacation. Every, all these women got to be so fabulous with these pictures and they, they bathe the suit. Look at me. I'm out here, bitches. We're like, oh, come on. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Really? You're on vacation. Enjoy it. Every woman on Instagram thinks she's the greatest thing on earth now. Mm -hmm. Come on, stop it. 
Yeah. Some of them can't even hold a conversation with you. They can't mm -hmm. stimulate you mentally. It's all about the body. And we yeah. we have lost our way. We are we are a lost soul right now because just because of social media. People are lost. They're gone. Yeah, it's crazy. So you've toured extensively since the late 90s. What are your favorite venues and cities to visit? I like Japan when I went to Osaka, the Blue Note, because yeah. they they uh they support you. They get into the music and they they they're genuine about it. And yeah. I went to Germany, same thing. So overseas, they is this the different type of vibe. They they really love soul music, and they mm -hmm. they. Put. I see why a lot of people go to Europe. And make it in the, a career and and get away from the states because people in the states are really jacked up in, in the way they treat you. If, you know, there are a lot of people here that want good music, and but when you go to a lot of these clubs, everything's a cover tune. It's just cover tune night. They don't want to hear no new music, and I yeah. think you got got to people got to come up with a way for original music to come back to to the forefront. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not really into the music like that anymore. You know, I, I moved on. I'm back in school, get my master's degree in social work, and I'm uh -huh. getting old. I don't have the time to just keep spending money on music anymore, putting out records. This next record I put out is my last one, mm -hmm. and moving on. And I'm at total peace with that because yeah. I've given all. You listen to Diva. Does it sound like I just half did that, or does it sound like I I gave you everything in that song? Everything you left it all on that song. That's what that's what I did that on every song I've recorded. But yeah. after a while, I'm a big follower of Shark Tank. You ever watch Shark Tank? I am obsessed with Shark Tank, Reggie. Who's Sorry. your favorite? Well, I I like Mr. Wonderful because he's he's brutally honest. And sometimes yeah. he tells people, he asks a question, so Ashley, how much have you spent in a business? And you'll say, Oh, I spent a uh, hundred thousand dollars. So Ashley, how much money did you make back? Uh five thousand dollars. He's gonna tell you, look. Take that business in the back and shoot it and go about your business. And he's right. That's the same thing in my music. Yeah. Oh, uh, how much did you spend? 100000 How much have you made back? Probably about 2000 He's going to say, what? Yeah. Say, yeah, brother, music business sucks, dude. And he's going to mm -hmm. tell me, bro, it's time to move on. And I'm going to have to look at him and say, you are right. And that's yeah. where I'm at now. You know, that's why I'm in school. I, I, music right now. It's almost a waste of time other than just a personal a goal that you want to achieve. You know, I did all the touring and stuff. When you get older, Ashley, it changes. I'll be 54 in May. I don't have time to be playing games anymore. Yeah. No, and, uh, and r when you're on tour, I mean, you're in buses, you're in hotels, you're in different cities. Like, it's intense being on tour. Yeah, it's tempting, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure because it's just like different city, different people. There's a lot going on. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of temptation out there. And if you marry, you don't you don't need to be on the on the tour. You need to be home with your wife and your kids. Right. You got to figure out another way to make money because you don't want to be out there in that type of world because uh, you being away from the home is never a good thing. You're not gonna be away for just a week. You're gonna be gone for a while. And I, I really feel when if a man gets older and things aren't really working out, you gotta make you gotta make a choice. You gotta figure out a new way to go because you gotta let music go. You don't have to give it up, but you gotta just move on from it. And I see a lot of people on here older than me just posting up videos. It's like, bro, you don't have nothing else to do. You're oh, you're older than me. What are you doing with yourself? Right. You know, and Instagram. After a while, where, where are we going with Instagram? People post up move the rec uh videos every day, every what else is there? You know, yeah. it's just something to stare at. And you're not getting anything out of it except, you know, you got a good show. There's a couple of people on here that got good content, but we that's the minority on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of slutty stuff on here that's nonsense that all that's all people want. They don't want to yeah. care. They don't care about Ashley Lie. And all this information I'm sharing, nobody cares. But if you know, if I was a superstar, then you have all these all these things blinking right now. All the people joining in. You know what I'm saying? The people are funny, Ashley. If the people are funny. Yeah. 
So back to touring, share a memorable time that you had on tour. Mm. I'm sure it's, you have several memories, but. <laughs> I remember I was on a tour in Germany. We were doing a play and then we drove to France because we had mm -hmm. a gig and it was, we, we were near the French Riviera and we oh. went to French Riviera, we had an off day and that off, oh, you talk about beautiful, we was there during the day and then at night it got became night, it was in the summertime. So to be on the, on the French Riviera, the Mediterranean Sea with the restaurants right there by the water, yeah. all these Ferraris and these exotic cars, it, I'll never forget that. I, yeah. I wish I could go back now. We, you know, have better pictures with the better quality of the cameras on the cell phone, video. It was, it was beautiful, man. And I experienced, you know, a lot of Germany. Saw how the red light district works, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. People don't even know about that. But um, I love traveling. I love Japan too. I got to see the bullet train. Uh, you know, a lot of the tour stuff, it was more, it was a job, you know, with tour with this rapper named Coolio. That was cool. A lot of rehearsing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was fun. I got to play in Will Smith's record, Freaking It, in the studio. That was fun. Got to awesome. meet him there. Yeah. Knocked him out in about an hour. So I had a great career. I've done big things, and my legacy is cemented. It's, Instagram deletes right now. I'm still going to people are going to still know me. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I'm blessed for that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it, I've had a great time. So I did the r and I did the rap, I did gospel. So I had it from a, an assortment of different genres. So it's, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing because, like you said, you've worked in all these different genres you, and you've worked with all these artists and you've toured and – such an incredible career. Yeah, thank you. And I got to play on records. That's how you yeah. get longevity, being on record, good records, classic yeah. records. Definitely. R&B, hip hop. So I'm blessed. I know I'm blessed because it could have, God could have used somebody else, but he chose chose me. So I'm not a fool. I know that I'm, I've been blessed to have mm -hmm. been in situation, but at the same time, when you get an opportunity, you have to make the best of it because you, you may not get the opportunity again. And I definitely can preach about making the best of opportunity because I made mm -hmm. the best of both those. Yeah. So, Very yeah. so what artists or genres of music have you been listening to during quarantine? Me? <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, me. <laughs> That's what I was listening to, me. I, mean, <laughs> I was writing my music for the new record last year. Yeah. So that's all I was doing. I, I very rarely listen to other people's music every now and then. You know, when I get in my car, I usually listen to sports radio or just the news station. Yeah. Because a break from music. When I work out, I don't listen to music. Except what the guy play at Planet Fitness over the speakers. Yeah. Uh, there, last year, I was just writing music, actually, just focusing and writing and recording. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I did all last year. I had a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. I took the. I, I definitely made a made the best out of my free time last year. Yeah, and that's so important because when this quarantine hit, nobody anticipated how crazy it was going to get in New York City. Like we were hit the hardest. Like we were the epicenter. <sighs> Knockout blow. Yes, it was crazy. And this time last year was when things were just starting to take off. And then all of a sudden, when the NBA shut down, I was like, wait, the NBA? What? That's, that, that's when it hit home. <laughs> exactly, because I was like, think of the people that go to the Knicks games, they watch the Nets play. I'm like, what? Yeah, and it's sad that the Nets are so good now and they can't have a full stadium. Cause I live right down the block from the Barclays Center. And I'm, I just yeah. want a full stadium. But last year, New York, we, Everything just shut down during the spring and the summer. This year, people are going to be out. There's going to be a different vibe in New York this summer and in the spring and uh, summer in New York. It's not going to be yeah. dead quiet this time around. <laughs> people just want to get out of their apartments. <laughs> yeah, want to get out their apartment. They, they want to stop wearing masks, but you got to keep wearing your mask. But 
people are going to be out this 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 spring and summer. The first, we see that the seven day forecast of like sixties and everything. It's a wrap. It's over. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So, if you weren't doing music, what career path would you choose, and why? I probably would have become a weatherman, meteorologist. I love the weather. Really. Love, 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 love. I'm fascinated by the weather. Very I've cool. Always, I've always loved, fascinated by thunderstorms, how it all happens, how tornadoes form and, and, and could become so powerful into an EF5 spinning at sometimes 300 miles an hour. Yeah. Light is fascinating to me. I love to listen to the rain. It's so relaxing. Mm -hmm. uh, I love a lot of things. I, I would love to have become a... Uh, what you call it? Uh, I'm doing. I'm in, in school now for social work. I would love to be a therapist. That's uh -huh. interesting. I love to talk. You know, I, I have the gift of gal. I get that from my father. So I love yeah. talking. I could do other things. I could. I, I used to be a typing teacher in high school. I typed seventy five words a minute. Nice. So I'm a photographer. I used to have my own photography business. Two thousand two oh. to two thousand seven. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got an eye photography for video. So I could edit. I could do a lot of stuff. Photoshop. I'm I'm a polymath. A polymath is somebody who's gift, uh, uh, gifted in different areas. Very, very knowledgeable in different areas. Mm -hmm. So, I, I love to confabulate. Confabulate means to have conversations, talk. <laughs> oh, I know you do. I know you're a talker. The first time you and I talked a couple of weeks back, we talked for like 20 minutes. I'm like, this is going to be a fun time. It's yeah. going to be. A fun time. <laughs> I I agree. So yeah, I have other things that, that interest me besides music. So uh, sometimes I get bored being around musicians because all they think about is music. Yeah. So a lot mm -hmm. of times I talk about music. Let's talk about something else, not sports either. You know, because I I could bring up some interesting topics with especially men that men don't like to talk about, like their yeah. health, going to the doctor. Nobody want to talk about that. Now, everybody's big and bad. You got swag but until you bring up going to the doctor <laughs> right everyone's scared <laughs> everybody's scared when it's time to get that prostate check <laughs> exactly <laughs> that you gotta get a check or you want them to say you got you got two hours to live or they want, you want them to say oh we can cure it and catch it if we catch it early yeah the choices mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's crazy yeah what song do you wish you wrote and why Hmm. Probably any one of Stevie Wonder songs. Yeah. I think he gets three million a year for royalties for his songs being used. Mm -hmm. So he gets compensated for his gift to the world, which is all any musician wants is yeah. to be compensated for their work. I love mm -hmm. music. Um, you know what's a great song that used to be Dolly Parton wrote, I Will Always Love You. Oh, yes. Yeah. Whitney just took it. She just, just stole it from her, but Whit, uh, Dolly Parton was the one getting all the money. So mm -hmm. you want to write a song like that that somebody can say, yo, you know that song Ashley wrote? We're going to use that in this huge movie we get ready to do. Because now your account going to go from this to and it's going to continuously get bigger because that's mm -hmm. resulting income. So, I, yeah, I would love to have written a song like that that became huge and became like you know legendary that had to do with uh had to be a great song like i will always love you but at the same time the business side you get compensated for because like right. my brother told me he said everybody know you can play bass but where's the money and right. i said "Ooh, that's deep i mm -hmm. know you can play but where's what about the business now where's the money and i said mm -hmm. well, that's that's powerful right there yeah. It's, the yeah, huh? it's important for musicians to know the business side. Like, okay, there's people that can play drums and people that can sing, but like, do you know the contract you're signing? Like, do you know how much splits you're going to get for each song? Well, like, I mean, I mean, when you record, like I was telling gospel musicians, if you come up with an intro and they record it, you, you'll do some publishing because you help put the song together. Right. See? Well, I got jerked. I didn't know any better. Every song that I played back then, I I, I wrote something for it. I came up with the bass line, the bass intro. 
but I didn't know the business side. Because I could easily say, hey, if y'all like this intro, we got to talk publishing. Now you right. got to get a piece of the pie. So yeah. gospel musicians have to be aware of that. And you can't be scared to speak up. Think, oh, well, I'm going to fire him because he want to be paid. Don't let them fire you. Who cares? Yeah. That They don't respect you. Mm -hmm. If they respect you and what you have to bring to the table, they're gonna say, "Okay, Ashley, you, you, yeah, you wrote the intro to the song. We give you five percent. Five percent is better than zero percent." Exactly. So that that's my take on that. Definitely, yeah. If you're a musician and you're in this chat, please know the business and speak up for yourself. It's a really and important. And know your worth. Yeah, definitely know your worth. Just, just make but, sure you have make sure you you have something that's you know something to be worth. Make sure you have something that people can value. Is what I'm trying okay. to. say. So when you come to the table, make sure you you're sharp on your instrument and you, you're ready for the moment. Mm -hmm. So eight years ago, you stepped out and started your journey to become an independent musician. Bring us back to that time and and how did it shape who you are now as a person? Another good question. Um, I went into the studio to write music that I was trying to get shot to other for other artists to do. Mm -hmm. Then my friend uh, told me, he said, man, you should keep this music for yourself. It's so personal. You should just keep it and just go ahead and keep finish the recording and put it out for you. Yeah. And that's what happened. So... I'm glad I did that because the chances of artists taking one of my songs was slim because I didn't have the person walking through the door to do that. That had you no know, so that's how that happened. Uh, I I said back then that I said I, I got to get a new audience besides the gospel audience because I knew they weren't going to support it because it wasn't gospel, and I was right. They didn't support it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to understand what's going to happen, so you're not as disappointed when it does happen. Right. Mm -hmm. But I know I put out great music because you listen to that. To have put out snapshots from my first project, that's pretty amazing when you listen to it. You yeah. listen to Swagger, Diva, Nine Minutes to Midnight. You said yeah, there's some stuff on there that's that's kind of, you know, classic stuff that'll never get old. Yeah. And so. if you guys not heard that music, please stream it on iTunes. Spotify, buy the music. It's extremely important because good music is out there and you just gotta find it. And Reggie has all that good music for you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You're, front, you're right, you, good music is out there. Sometimes you just gotta dive in the ocean and go down to the bottom and get it. It's gonna be it, worth it. Definitely. So what's the best advice you've ever been given? The best advice I've ever been given? Ooh. <laughs> my father used to always say you got to meet people where they are you'll never change them mm. that's powerful he's my father I get all my wisdom from him he was a very wise guy and he was right about that and I guess the best advice that I've ever given myself was from Swaggo because I was going through something back then and I said no matter what life throws at you never lose your swagger because if you lose your swagger you lost a lot <laughs> So you got to keep your confidence because everybody going to go through something in life, but you can't let it break you because then you're not going to be able to go on in life because you're, you're broken. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people that a lot. I tell men that a lot. And I say, just always think of the consequences before you do it, you know, because the consequences will follow you for life and the consequences can, consequences hurt. Actually, a consequence ain't, ain't a punishment for that last just overnight or <laughs> week. Consequences yeah. can follow you everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Life, so you got to be careful out here, especially with how beautiful women are. And ask yourself, is she worth it? All the pain that I can come with you, you'll never know which one is going to be the one that's going to mess you up. You don't. That's the thing. Yeah, and a woman don't know which guy can mess up her, her up either. You just yeah. don't. Know. But when you play that game, either win or you're gonna lose. Yeah. It's no ties. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to know the rules before you play, but the, the rules now have changed. I mean, a lot yeah. of people know the rules. The rules are, it's vicious out here. That's the, that's the rules. Be careful. Yeah, definitely. 
So Reggie, how can people in this chat support you as a musician right now? Go download all my music. <laughs> download my music. Tell your friends to download. You want to hear good music? Oh, check this dude out. You know, just go download. Don't just stream it and think you, you know, you you add it to my retirement fund. You're not doing that when you stream. Streaming is, is minus pennies. It's it's right. nothing. How are you gonna get below a penny? That's ridiculous. I know. Penny? You know? What? <laughs> But they give people too many options with music these days. You know, yeah. they got they got Tidal, they got uh, Amazon, they got Apple Music, they got the Spotify. It's just too much. Then you go to iTunes, Bandcamp, and you got iTunes a minute and a half preview. Now, come on, man! Preview should be thirty seconds the longest. Mm -hmm. Back in my time, there was no preview. If you got a new record coming out, I had to buy it. That's the only way I can hear it. Yeah. Nowadays, there's too many options, man. And you got these knuckleheads that coming up with Spotify and all that that don't care about artists. They don't. They care about themselves. Yeah. It's slavery all over again because we getting picked, we getting played. Mm -hmm. It's almost to the point if you don't sign with a record label, you're doomed. You're just yeah. doing it say you got a record out. Other mm -hmm. than that, you're not going to make no money. It's so bad you can put your record out, your stuff don't even have to be copyrighted because it ain't going to matter. <laughs> yeah. Sad. It is. It's depressing. <laughs> so that's all the questions that I have for you, but I do think there are some questions in the chat. So guys, if you have questions for Reggie, please feel free to put them in the chat feature below and we will get to your questions. You asked some good questions. Well, thank you. <laughs> good questions, especially the one, what's the best wisdom you ever got? Yeah, I think that's so important, though, because a lot of people say, be yourself. And, you know, you said that earlier, like, there's no one that can be like you, just do you. Yeah, but a lot of people don't know who they are. Exactly. <laughs> they, they're faking it every day. They don't know who they are. They're just trying to be liked and seen because they right. self shattered. You got to be confident yeah. before any confident, you're not going to do nothing, you know? You gotta yeah. be confident. Yeah. A lot of people are not confident. They're confident when you're on their Instagram page, you know, because it's just a camera and separating them. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What have you been doing during the pandemic? Uh, well, writing music, working out, spending mm -hmm. a lot of time at home. I get together with my, my neighbors. We go out and barbecue a lot last year, smoke cigars, talk. Just try to just, nice. you know. Last year, I was I said, I can't stay in the house. Yeah. Um, I had to, I, so I started to barbecue a lot in the backyard and my neighbors, a couple of guys, neighbors came over. We started barbecuing every, like every other day, you know, we would get together and just barbecue and, have a good time. And we probably ended up doing that about 15 times last summer. That's good, though, because it gives you something to look forward to. You're outdoors. You're seeing people in real life. Yeah, yeah. So I, I started that. They start to see that. Hey, you, you've been barbecuing every almost every day. I said, well, dude, there's nothing else to do. I got to get out the house. So yeah. I started something. And it was a good thing. because It brought us together. We all had to get out the house. and Exactly. It, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. And, you know, working out, I, I like to go work out, walk, walk to Fort Green Park and, you know, walk around and just hear the birds and think, run around the park, Planet Fitness, I do that. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm a thinker, I like to think. Now I'm back in school, so that's kicking my behind, but it's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good You're thing. Because you know you're going to get something out of it. Yeah. One, you know, you do music, you don't know what you're going to get. But when you go get your master's degree, in the end, you know, yeah, you're going to have your master's degree. Nobody can't take that from you. Yeah. Amazing. What is your favorite place to play or see other musicians in the city? Uh, that used to be this place called uh, Wilson's. That was a while ago. My boy, Ron Grant, he passed away. That was mm -hmm. great because you could see so many celebrities down there, Mike Tyson, Michael Jordan, Wesley, 
nights. I saw Tupac. Tupac sat at my table one night. Oh wow! Yeah, Tupac. <laughs> I saw a lot of people down there. And he sat right at my table smoking cigarettes all night, and yeah. then he left. I guess around twelve thirty, one o'clock in the morning. Like I said, I saw Mike Tyson down there. I, I played. The guy let me fill in for him. He took his break, so I got to play. Mm -hmm. So I took advantage. Of it. I got. I met a lot of people that I got a lot of gigs from that. You know. Yeah. So that's how I got the Will Smith gig. You know, um, it was great. I took advantage of that, but I was humble enough to know it was the other guys. That's his gig. He just said, "Yo, you want to play for a while?" I said, "Sure, I'll take advantage of it." So yeah. you got to be humble, especially mm -hmm. when you, you know you're upcoming. There's other people mm -hmm. that. There already, so I took advantage of that. I, I love Wilson. It only happened on Sunday nights, and then it starts around nine o'clock at night. And mm -hmm. It was dope. It was the vibe was so dope, so dope because it was just nice. People coming together, hear some good music. Yeah, nobody was about no trouble. It was just a good, good, good vibe. I missed mm -hmm. that. Yeah, where were where was the, uh, Wilson's located in the city? Seventies. It was the 70s over by off the West Side Highway. It was okay. a beautiful, beautiful spot over mm -hmm. off Broadway in the middle of the block. It was beautiful. Yeah. That, oh, man, you missed you missed a great, great time. Oh, it lasted yeah. about three years. And then uh -huh. they moved to some other place. You know, man, it was beautiful. That was that was a spot to be. And I got in every time. I never had to worry about getting in because I they knew I played with the band. So I had to have my bass with me. It just let me go right in. So if I had people with me, they came right in with me. So awesome. Was, yeah. That was nice. What's your favorite film? The Godfather 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Doors. And I love the, uh, I love Goodfellas. I like all the old stuff because it had plots. You know, Fatal yeah. Trap. Oh, Fatal Trap. It wasn't just about a pretty girl and a pretty uh, a handsome guy. It actually had a plot to it. Nowadays, yeah. it's all about who's the sexiest. And, the, right. and the, the plot is terrible. It's so predictable. It's trash. Mm -hmm. Back then, they made some movies, man. Yeah. New Jack City. Man, the list is long. I love I love all them old movies. I, I can watch The Godfather over and over. Scarface yeah. is good, too. Mer uh, I like a st Denzel's American Gangster, mm -hmm. Robert De Niro's movies, The Score. Yeah. Because they had good plots. These The stuff today, uh, yeah. getting old. I, I just don't like, I just can't watch nonsense, Ash. You got to have something that's going to make me say, wow, that was a genius. I No, I know. I When you said Robert De Niro, one of my favorite movies is Casino. I love that movie and i think pretty much everything robert de niro in is awesome anyway so i'm with you on on old movies did you see irishman i did not see that oh, did you see man. you gotta go it's on netflix you gotta watch that i, I gotta watch that all-time class it's long as heck but it's yeah it's greatness mark my words i watched oh, it I three times <laughs> it's that good it's that good yeah. robert de niro is older uh, yeah. Pesci's in it. Joe Pesci's in it. Excellent. Yeah. Al Pacino's in it. Yeah. Plays Jimmy Hoffa. Right. You got to see it. Promise me you watch that. I promise you I'm going to see it. And I, I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. I guarantee you, you won't watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. How did you develop a style that complemented your fellow musicians but featured your bass. Where are you getting these questions from? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't see them. It's okay. I'm I'm looking at the chat, so I know the questions and the comments that are coming through. But people have questions in it, so that's where I'm getting them from. <laughs> Say it again. That's a good question. Where okay. I get how? Yeah. So Papa Chunks wants to know. That's his name. How did you develop a style that complemented your fellow musicians? but featured your bass. I guess he's talking about my, my music. Uh, I guess because I kept it musical, uh, as musicianship. Yeah. 
for my records, uh, I knew it was my record, but sometimes I knew I wanted to feature somebody else. Right. So I would, like my song, Will I Ever Hear You Say, I played the verses, I played the lead line. Mm -hmm. She sings the choruses, so I wanted to feature her. Her name is uh, Julianne. So she's a featured on the record. So I mm -hmm. just the verses and I sat back and I said, the rest of the song is all you. You know, and I have other songs where I'll pick my spots to play and then I'll let somebody else play or sing. Yeah. So next record that I'm doing is more me playing. There's not a lot of singing. There's a lot of just singing on the bass. <laughs> it's, more, it's more of an instrumental, my first real jazz project where I'm doing a lot more playing. Nice. Yeah, yeah so I'm looking forward to this. This is my best music. And, and like I said, I'm at peace. I can't I have this guy named Jeremy Jeffers. He's blind. He played keyboard. And he's he's about to mortify many people. For those that take the chance the time to listen. They'll yeah. be they listen. Because it's I'm telling you, if once you press play on it, it's gonna take you somewhere. You know, yeah. it's not gonna take long for you to start going, woo. <laughs> By the way, that vibe, it's a vibe. It's just wow, you had a long day, press play, like, wow, this is nice. You know, Love pour that. your glass of wine or even drink some water. You're going to say, this is, I'm relaxed now. This is, nod your head to it. It's that type of vibe. Uh, yeah. So do you have a date for that album when it's going to be released? Sometime in May. I have not oh. uh, finishing up a couple of songs now that get mixed. I just have to get the mastered, which is the easiest part. Right. And because it's finishing up the, the uh, design, graphic design for the, the CD cover. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's pretty funky. I'm not yeah. gonna tell you the name of it, but it, it's it's nice. It's I got God bless me with some great stuff on here. Uh, I got some stuff. If I was on a record label and they pushed this, it could definitely go platinum if I had somebody pushing it. Right. Record people playing it on the radio. If I had that kind of push, it's that type of project that could just go phew, be an all time. Yeah. But it, it could go People are such haters now. I can go. People won't say nothing because you understand. People don't. They they don't tell you. Oh, Ashley, you touching me with your your show. Your show is just so dope. You motivate. They keep it to themselves. Yeah. You you. They could love Diva and all the songs from Snapshot. They don't say nothing. Yeah. Not a, just act like it's just regular stuff. And they'll yeah. print somebody's cover tune on Instagram though. You're the greatest. <laughs> oh, oh, this is. But when you put out music. It's crickets. You'd be shocked. At it. I'm telling you, you'd be shocked. A couple mm. of like it, then the record come out. A couple of days, it's, it's over. Nobody says nothing. Yeah, but it's crazy. Oh, y'all, some hating behind people, man. Mm. Mm. It's crazy. Mm. Listen, I could talk about that stuff forever, and it was all. It would all be facts. Yeah. No, I I know, and and that's thank you for opening us up to that because I think it's really important for people to know the truth and, and what happens in the industry. People are full of garbage, Ashley. That's all I'll say. I, I'll keep your show G-rated. <laughs> <laughs> Rod wants to know, what was it like recording in London with Hez and LFCC? It was a job. <laughs> it was a job. Um, I had been playing with them for a minute when I did that. So we got to London a few days before the session. So we had time to relax, we went shopping. And we had rehearsed so much for the, because there was a lot of recording. So I played every song. So yeah. we rehearsed so much that it was, we knew the stuff inside out. It didn't matter. It was no guessing. Oh man, what, what, how's this song go again? No, mm -hmm. we just blazed it. So it was fun. It was nice to be flown to London. Yeah. Uh, for free, and you get paid for it. Yeah. You know, the day of the session, they left me. I had my mm. own. So I overslept. <laughs> None <laughs> of the musicians woke me up. Oh wow! <laughs> they let me sleep, so I had to take the the bus there. Luckily, Hezekiah Walker it was his gig. He was still there, so I, I rode over with him uh -huh. and his big player who wanted to meet me was driving him. So he was in heaven. He got to he got to drive his and 
drive me and ask me questions. So he was, it worked out for him. And has <laughs> look at that. See, you didn't even know this was gonna this is gonna be your day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was cool. It was more like just job, you know. I wasn't caught up in the hype or anything. Mm -hmm. Once again, just grateful. I love that was a dope trip, man. The session was great, but the trip itself was beautiful. Oh, awesome! I love it. So, Reggie, that's all the time that we have this evening. But do you have any final words for the room? Do what's in your heart. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Yeah. Stop following the crowd. We've got enough people that are followers. You need more people that are leaders. Right. You had to go against the grain. And too many musicians just just not studying enough. Instagram got their heads all twisted up. And you got to become a true musician and just stop the nonsense that goes on on here. You got to really practice and dive in the deep end of the pool. There's too many people sitting in the shallow end of the pool just kicking their feet in the water. Mm -hmm. If you be dope, you got to jump in that 15 foot part. That's yeah. when it starts. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't want to dive in. That's too much work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shallow in is safe. <laughs> well, you can see those that have jumped in the deep end, and you can see those that are sitting at the shallow part of the pool. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I I, I completely agree with, with what you're saying. And Thank you guys, Rod and Keanu and Sosi. Thank you, thank you guys for, for joining us. And Reggie, I just want to thank you for spending your evening with us. It was such a wonderful, honest, truthful conversation filled with funky music and grooves. And guys, please make sure to download Reggie's music on iTunes. Go to his website, reggieparker.com. His new album is coming out in May. And guys, Make sure to follow him on Instagram, share his stuff, buy his stuff. This is really, really, really important for not just Reggie, but all musicians all over the place. And guys, please make sure to follow me. I'm Ashley Live. This is Vibing with Ashley Live. And thank you guys for joining me. Stay safe and have a wonderful night. Bye, guys. Bye, Ash.